Hey folks, good morning. How are we all doing today? It is Sunday, September 26th, 2021. Boy oh boy, has September went quickly. So as part of the video, I want to focus on talking about the subject of marshes. Now, many of you, I'm sure, have heard of that word, of a marsh. However, though, do some of you really know what a marsh describes? Well, it's a bit of a, it can be a bit complicated, but I'm going to try to break it down for you. So, without further ado, let me try to uh, explain. So basically, like, what we're looking at is a marsh right in front of me. But there's a little more to it. A marsh basically describes a type of wetland, as there are a few different types of wetlands, whether it be bogs, swamps, or even fens. Now, some of you may have thought that swamps and marshes have been used interchangeably. However, though, that's not really the case, I'm afraid. They're actually two separate things. A swamp mostly has water year-round, and it's mostly dominated by trees most of the time. So a great example, like in Florida, for instance, is the big swamp, the big cypress swamp preserve, you know, down by the Everglades. But a marsh, on the other hand, is really controlled by tidal action, whether it be from, you know, an estuary that's nearby. And we aren't too far from Lemon Bay. So in a sense, marshes, too, they're not really dominated by trees. But then, like, you can see a bit of a transition from being in a mesic pine flatwood to then hardly any trees at all, where it's mostly just mangroves in the distance. So it's actually really cool to see this type of transition going on. So some of you may be thinking, like, what's the point? Well, why, why should I care about marshes? Well, think of it this way. Marshes, in a sense, act as nature's natural water purification system. I, know that I need to think of uh, an abbreviation for that. <laughs> but they essentially act as a natural filter for our natural world. So with that being said, oftentimes... In a marsh, the soil is extremely rich in nutrients, especially nitrogen. That's one of the most essential elements that allows for plant growth and increases the fertility of the soil. Now, with that being said, how does it really get so organic? Well, as I mentioned, what we're basically looking at is something called a tidal marsh. So you figure there can be water fluctuations time and time again. It's like right now, the water levels might be a little moderate at the moment. But they have been known to be much higher, depending on how much rain there is. But one of the reasons how marshes can be so rich in nitrogen is through our plants. So think of it this way. This is actually a plant that I want to point out to you guys. You see this right here? Try not to get in the way. You see that yellow flower? That's actually something known as a hairy cowpea. Now, they call it a hairy cowpea for a couple of reasons. 
So like, if we might be lucky enough, it's been known that as it approaches into the fall, they actually produce these hairy uh, pea pods. They essentially produce peas. And they are indeed edible. But I'm really not going to really bother with it. So that explains the first part of why they're called hairy. Because the texture of their seed pods are a bit hairy. But then they call it cow pea. Because it's been noticed, you know, in recorded history, every, even since the settlers have been down here, or, you know, since they arrived, the Europeans, they noticed that this is also safe for livestock grazing. So it's reasonable to say, you know, since cows have always been one of the most common forms of livestock in the United States that might be part of the reason why they call it cow pee but you can see that it really acts like a vine and rest assured they are native to the southeast United States but they've even been found as far north as say Pennsylvania for example And, yeah, that, 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 that's the relieving part, is that they are at least native. But what's also neat, too, is, as I mentioned, these plants are nitrogen fixers. They like to obtain nitrogen from the atmosphere and use it for their growth to produce more food and attract any other pollinators. So this is one of the many plants that enables the richness of the soil. And then, of course, like you see all this grass here. This is mostly wire grass, which you'll commonly see in scrub habitats or even at marshes. You can only imagine how deep the roots go under the soil, too. It's quite remarkable. Like this is only tip of the iceberg more or less but with that being said too marshes really provide a bit of a nursery for our fishes birds crabs you name it and they're just essential for allowing our wildlife to thrive have a place to live but here's the one thing though well actually you know what you guys I'm gonna make a part two for this video because I feel like if I try to do it all in one video it's gonna be way too long so let's let's just leave off where we were and we'll continue on with the next video. So, stay tuned for part two. So, all right, you guys. Enjoy your Sunday and journey on a journey is outwards. Take care, folks. See ya.